reading is a great passion of mine. I've always got a book hanging around somewhere, usually within about an arm's reach of me. <laughs> but my attention, well, it sometimes wanders when I try to read. Sometimes it's easy to focus. Sometimes I find the story almost soaks into my mind with no effort at all. Sometimes I'm able to just allow the experience of the story to happen inside my head almost as if I'm not really reading at all. It's just happening to me. Sometimes it's easy to bring that focus. But sometimes, I don't know about you, have you ever had that feeling where you're reading, you're scanning the lines with your eyes over and over? Maybe you can imagine it now. You're reading the lines and Part of you is following it. Part of you is continuing to run your eyes down each line, down the page. But part of you has tuned out, switched off, and become almost daydreamy. Your mind has wandered somewhere deep in your subconscious and you're thinking about nothing at all really but everything at the same time and you scan down the page down and down and it's only later that you realize you weren't really reading at all because you'd zoned out you could say that's trance couldn't you it feels very similar for me, that warm, hot, fuzzy kind of feeling in my head. I get that feeling where my eyes just unfocus a little bit. My vision does that thing <laughs> that it does when I'm falling into trance, when I'm falling so deep. My body relaxes when I'm reading those lines and not really reading because my mind is wandering. But I still feel like I'm following. Do you feel like you're following my words, my story right now? My stories are easy to follow. They don't even need the effort of reading lines or turning pages. Although if you were to turn the page right now, maybe you could turn to a wonderfully blank page. A page that's just bright whiteness, all promise, inside your head. Not knowing where the story is going to go, but so ready to allow it to happen. So ready to focus on the words. Not words you have to read. Not words you even really have to listen to, because they're words that can just happen in the same way that stories just happen when you're so into them, when you're engrossed in something, when you're so deeply occupied by the task of just enjoying something, that it feels effortless. And that's all you need to do right now, almost like dreaming. Isn't it? When you're really in the flow of a good book. Let me be your good book. Imagine what it would be like in a library right now. A beautiful, ornate library. The way that those books would smell on the shelves. That wonderful, evocative smell of knowledge of experiences, of adventures that you can have simply by reading a book. The feel of the pages under you, 
beneath your fingers, scanning line after line and letting this story into your head, letting it unfold as you read. A beautiful oak table beneath you, scratched in that way that tables are when they've been used so many times by so many minds. And right now you're so able to focus on the story, so able to focus on my words which are the story, as you read that book, a tome in front of you, that you're desperately trying to understand, but you keep tuning out, don't you? You keep drifting off, zoning out, and just observing what's around you, because there's so many things to see, to feel, to sense, in a library. And across from you there's a girl, a pretty girl. <laughs> you know what you're like with pretty girls. They always catch your eye, don't you? And every so often you look up from that book you're trying so desperately to read, but that your mind keeps wandering off to the girl, to the pretty girl. And what is she reading? You try and see the cover of the book that she seems so engrossed in. She's lost in her book. You think about what it would be like to be lost with her. You know how you'd love to get lost. Lost in other people's desires, don't you? lost in other people's adventures. And the book that she's reading has this cover, a sort of shiny, swirling pattern on the cover. And it catches your eye. And that zone out feeling of reading that book somehow transmutes itself to looking at the cover of her book. And no matter how hard you try, just like when you were trying to read before, you can't seem to look away. The patterns are almost moving, snake-like, shimmering. And it's so distracting and yet so absorbing no matter how much you try to look back to your book, the cover of hers keeps you distracted. What kind of book is she reading? You have a small conscious worry that she'll catch you staring. You know it's not polite to stare, but the book, it's just impossible to look away. And she does. She flicks her glance up above her spectacles. And she sees you staring. And you feel a warm flush of embarrassment through your body to know that you've been staring and that you can't stop. You know it's rude to stare, but still the book is shimmering and swirling, almost spiral patterns that seem to push into your head. It seemed to pull your attention, this ephemeral connection. And it's not just the book, it's her too, as she glances at you and holds her gaze on yours. Her piercing blue eyes seem to bore into you, bury into your mind. Your eyes widen just a little bit. And your breath catches in your throat. You feel your pulse begin to increase because there's just something about how she's looking at you. The smug smile that's beginning to creep across her lips, subtle but there, that you can see in your peripheries as you stare at the swirling, spiralling cover of her book. There's something about it that feels like magic feels like the air is electric between you. There's a charge. And still you stare. You feel your body relaxing. 
Even as you have that sense of being a rabbit caught in the headlines, your fingers on the pages of the book you were reading seem to slide down. Your muscles in your back and your neck seem to go loose and floppy. And while your mind has a sense that you should be doing anything but this, your body seems to have other plans. Her smile broadens and she snaps her fingers and you break out of it. You blush. <laughs> and when you next look at her, after a few blinks, she's back reading her book again. Deeply engrossed in her swirling, spiralling book. You blush. You wonder if you imagined it. It felt so far-fetched <laughs> to be caught in a trance, was it? And so you go back to your book. The book you're reading is much more interesting than you remember it being. You remember it being dry before, but you suppose that the focus that you had before, the focus on that book and that girl must have snapped you out of whatever malaise you were in, because now, when you read the book, it's exciting. How didn't you realise it before? It's a story of romance and mind control. You feel a sense of excitement rising in you as you read how the characters in the book slowly move between bookshelves. The protagonist, blank, empty, following, not knowing where, not caring where, not having any thought in their head, but to follow but to submit to the will of the beautiful woman that they're enraptured by. Following blankly, mindlessly, one foot in front of the other, pulled as if attached by a leash. Some magical leash that means that they can't look away, can't run can only follow as she looks back with piercing blue eyes. They weave their way deeper and deeper through the stacks of books into a part of the library that you've never seen before, into a part of the library that is full of ancient texts, a part of the library it has an arcane feeling to it, as if the shelves themselves are full of dark magic. She pushes you up against the wall and stares into your eyes with her eyes, her eyes that are full of a fury, of an intensity of a blue, grey, green that is so fantastic that you seem to tumble into them, like deep pools that you could fall into, deeper and deeper. Her gaze shakes through your body and takes away any shred of doubt that's left in you, any shred of thought that's left in you. Good, obedient thing. That's it. Feel your mind draining away from me. Feel your mind clearing because there is nothing else right now. There is nothing except me. She runs her hand down your body, from the nape of your neck, down the centre and down and down. You feel your flesh rise to meet her. You feel the intensity of her touch, like sparks through your body that make you shudder with desire as she reaches your abdomen 
and carries on going deeper. You know that her finger is the only thing that matters right now. She's running her hand down and down, down your thighs now, and back up to the top, where she holds her finger just above your eye line and moves it back and forth, back and forth. You didn't know the book could be this interesting. You didn't know what you were reading was such an exciting tale. You partly wonder whether you should be reading this kind of erotic story in the middle of a library. But it's only a story, isn't it? Only a story as she runs her hand over your lips and pushes her finger into your mouth ever so slightly. And you feel your eyes roll back as every nerve ending in your sensitive mouth explodes with desire. She runs her finger back down your body again, and as she does, she sweeps away anything that's left inside your head because you know you need her right now. You need to serve her. That's an obedient thing. Feels so good not to think. It's only a story. It's only an adventure, and you want to be an adventurer, don't you? You want to feel what my words can do. What are stories but words, and what are you but made to follow? Made to keep following. Now get on your knees for me. You feel your body comply and sink to the ground. You feel your mind echoing her instructions around and around. Nothing else. It's only a story. Only a tale. Whatever you do, it isn't real. It isn't real and so you can enjoy it. No guilt, no shame. Just let it happen. She lifts up her skirts. And you, some part of you, wonders again whether this book was on the shelves of the library and I wonder how high on the shelves it was. It doesn't seem like the kind of book that anyone should get hold of. It's too good for that. The story is too wonderfully arousing for that. And as she lifts her full skirt, you see the hosiery beneath, the suspender stockings, and your mouth begins to water as you notice she's wearing no underwear at all. You don't know when you started to need to feel the scent of her on your face, to feel your lips, your tongue exploring in between her legs, licking her, making her moan, but you need it more than anything. You need it like it's what you were programmed to do, like it's what you were put on this earth to do, to please her with your mouth. That mouth that's been made so sensitive, hasn't it? Such a sensitive mouth, such a greedy mouth, such a desperate mouth that wants to please. Isn't that right? My good, obedient thing. You look so good like that, on your knees. You look so wonderful with all that focused, focused, focused. You realise you've been reading without needing to read. You've never been this focused in your entire life, not on anything. And yet the focus you have right now is so completely all-encompassing. Even the corners of your vision are dark. You know what your purpose is, and you want it so badly. It's like you're feral, a beast, but yet so controlled as you patiently wait on your knees, drooling for a taste of her. She runs her hands through your hair on your scalp and her fingers touching the back of your head feel amazing, feel like a thousand wonderful little pulses of pleasure on every hair follicle on the back of your head that seem to go straight into your mind as if she could stroke your thoughts. And every little stroke on the back of your head as she grabs and guides your face towards her wet cunt. 
feels like a song. Feels like a choir, feels like rising notes inside you, feels like a sunrise. And your body is responding to your body is swelling and readying for anything that she wants to do with you. But she knows what she wants to do with you. I know what you need. I know how good you'll serve me. She puts one leg up on a ladder on a bookshelf next to you and buries your face in the warm folds of her cunt. And you feel a bliss run through you unlike anything you've ever felt. You feel so immersed in her control, so utterly saturated by her will. You feel anything left inside your head dissolve as you put yourself to the task that you know that you're for. Your tongue exploring, bringing her pleasure as you lick and suck. As you feel her wetness begin to run down your face. As she moans and every moan and gasps is so wonderful. Every moan and gasp goes straight to the core of you, to know that you're pleasing, to know that you're serving. You think the character in the book is the luckiest person in the world because they get to serve this amazing person in that way. You wish it was you, don't you? You need it to be you. You want it to be you. And you lick and lick as she shudders and moans and her pleasure becomes your pleasure. You can feel it, can't you, that arousal building in you as you lick, as she spasms and twitches under your ministrations, as you feel the softness of her vulva, the deep wetness of her cunt. You feel it, the warmth on your skin, you feel the scent of her in your nose and it fills you up dizzying like the best most intoxicating perfume like a drug as you lick and lick and she moans and squirms and yet you hold her there you hold her steady she holds your head pushed against her as she nears that climax and you feel pleasure rising within you too you feel your own body just thrusting into the air, squeezing down, making the most of every little bit of pleasure that you're getting from pleasing her. Every bit of pleasure that's rising in you, rising in you right now, rising to a peak, to a point where it just feels so good, this erotic energy running all through you, running all over you, your mind seeming to amplify it as you please her, as she moans, and you moan into her cunt because it feels so good to be pleasing her, until eventually you feel her beginning to crest that wave and you begin to crest with her. You begin to feel that amazing, erotic release of energy coming over both of you as she begins to moan and writhe in a new, more deep, more intense way until finally she comes and it feels like you come too. You have that amazing release inside your mind and your body shakes with the wonderful emotional connection that you've formed, that she's forged inside your mind as you both relax and as she looks down at you contented and says, Good, obedient thing. That felt so fucking good. <laughs> you can go now. I'm done. I'm satisfied and you've done so well. Well done. She strokes your cheek fondly. And the characters in the book, they go their separate ways. They go back to the desk. They sit back down. And you read over the page. You read the text that you've just been reading. And it's not the story that you thought. <laughs> you must have drifted off. You must have unfocused, let your mind daydream. Because that girl is still sitting across from you and she looks so good. She's smiling at you. <laughs> that makes you feel shy. 
You wonder if she noticed you having that erotic daydream. You wonder if she saw you, felt your arousal somehow. Because the lines of the book, they're still the dry text that you were reading before, aren't they? Reading maybe the same line over and over again for however long you tuned out. It could have been a moment, or it could have been half an hour or longer, you don't know. And the fantasy was so intense, it's almost like you can smell that intoxicating scent on your face. But you know, you know how you're prone to such realistic daydreams sometimes. You do get lost in those thoughts, don't you? And she's reading her book again. She's finished smiling at you and she's engrossed once again in that wonderful, exciting looking book. And so you go back to reading. Go back to struggling through whatever text you were trying to read. Bringing your focus back to me now, back to my voice, back to the room that you're in. Because stories are just stories, aren't they? Until they mean something. We all create stories about ourselves and I wonder, what's the story you'll tell yourself about the reason you're listening to my voice right now? Is it entertainment? Well, you've chosen hypnosis to be your entertainment, haven't you? And what does that mean? Do you think it's a game? It's not. It's a tool. A tool for me to get inside your head. But if I can make it feel good, if I can make the story engaging, then you'll keep coming back, won't you? And it'll be far too late before you realise how deep my words and my stories about you have gotten inside your head until I change the narrative of who you are. <laughs> but for now I need you to come all the way back up. Up and out of trance. In three, two, one. That's it. <laughs> well done. Such a wonderful adventure we've gone on together. <laughs> It was interesting, I've been thinking about doing a file like that for a while. A kind of merging of reality and fantasy, because it feels like that sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> when you're in trance. Sometimes you don't know what's your thoughts, what's real, what's been put there. <laughs> and so I wanted to explore that. Hmm, I hope you enjoyed it. Also, you might have the impression that uh, having someone worship my cunt like that is kind of my jam <laughs> I think I I think I might need to take a minute I really enjoyed doing that maybe I'll need to listen back hmm. I liked taking you on my little adventure with me <laughs> so please let me know if you enjoyed it and make sure you take it easy today okay make sure you relax take time for yourself with so much chaos in the world, I want you to remember that you deserve to feel good. <laughs> whether you're with me or whether you're not. Have a wonderful day. And take care. Mwah.